Monkey Bone, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to I Like to Movie Movie, the podcast about movie movies. My name is Garrett Smith. My name is Dan Scully, and I just knocked Monkey Bone off of my marker board here Excellent. of other movies that start with Bone, now that Bone Tomahawk is, uh, is uh, we can't affiliate it with it at the moment. <laughs> is there a Skull and Bones movie, or are they just called, are those movies just called like The Skulls? I know that the skulls are movies. I mean, I think there's so many movies out there that statistically it's likely that there's a movie called Skull and Bones. Uh, yeah. Um, I bet we can find that out really, really quickly. Do you think there's a Land Before Time sequel that has, like, Bone in the title somehow? Tell you what, there is not a movie called Skull and Bones. There's a TV miniseries from 2003, and then there's a band called Skull and Bone Band. That he's in the music department for a 2010 movie called Faster Emily Push Push. Okay. So there's that. But uh, yeah, and then there's The Skulls, which I didn't realize stars Paul Walker. I knew it had Joshua Jackson. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize Paul and Walker. And now I got to see it. Oh, well, you know, of course it stars Paul Walker because the original Skulls is directed by Rob Cohen of oh, yeah. The that Fast and the Furious, Triple yeah. X, and the. Uh, uh, the first post-Oscar movie for Jamie Foxx, uh, Stealth. Oh, yeah. Uh, also director of uh, Hurricane Heist, if I'm not mistaken. Hurricane Heist, <laughs> where they make ninja stars out of hubcaps. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful I, stuff. I still haven't seen that. Would, would like to. Would like to. You would enjoy it, man. I think I would. It's not like, it's not like, I mean, you, you're going to go into it with the right mindset. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's no doubt that you're going to go into it and know exactly how to accept it. But, like, it's a lot of fun, and the effects are, like, <laughs> pretty effective if not good yeah i think i would probably enjoy that movie it stars toby kebble oh i like him yeah he's good yeah that's my impression of toby kebble and every other person from england (laughs) so you know yeah i every time i think about him for some reason i end up thinking about kong skull island yeah even though oh yeah mostly because he feels so wasted in that movie like he's like on screen for like you know 10 minutes actually but Here's actually, the thing. a lot more than that, because I think he also plays Kong. He was motion captured for Kong, yeah, yes. Yeah. And I think a couple of the other creatures, right. too. Right, he plays like a bunch of stuff in it. He's been a motion capture artist yeah. for a long time. Like, he was in the Planet of the Apes movies. He's great in those Planet of the Apes movies. Yes. Yeah. My first exposure to Toby Kebble was he played Johnny Quid in probably my favorite Guy Ritchie movie, Rock and Roller. Okay. And uh, he's just like a, a angry, you know, cranked out punk rocker mohawk kind of guy from england and uh, that's the character he plays i know him from has... black mirror i think yeah oh and that's a heartbreaking black yeah, mirror yeah yeah especially for someone with trust issues that's a difficult one <laughs> so it's like it's some heartbreaking stuff yeah that episode is pretty wild yeah that got me because i was like oh man you're blowing it and then you're like yeah. oh man you were right oh uh, he's really but good in that episode too. He was yeah. really good. He's yeah. got a great line in Rock and Rolla where he's mocking Archie, as played by Mark Strong. Everyone calls it Arch, and he says, "Don't at me, Arch. I'm only little." <laughs> and it's just a very funny application of uh, phrases that I, as an American, don't use. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I'm only little, <laughs> but man, and and. At the end of that movie, in the credits, has a Johnny Quid will return, and so I am waiting, waiting for two rock to roller, whatever it's gonna be called. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was trying to think of a good truck and troll with the digital too. Oh yeah, we're visual. This is YouTube, so I can. Do I know this. you can do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was trying to, I was trying to rem- I was trying to think of a good rock and roller sequel title, but I couldn't get there. I don't, like, would it be, would it just be called like grunge? <laughs> I, like it I was trying to think of like grunge. what the. Well, it's been so long that I think now it would just have to be like soft rock and roller. Right, right, yeah. And they're all just Adult like Adult contemporary bit older. Roller. Yeah. <laughs> and <Yeah>. roller. <laughs> just uh, rock. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we could do a spinoff called Butt Rock and Roller. Oh, that's right. And really it's just like, and honestly, to tell you the truth, rock and roller doesn't have like any real ties to like rock and roll music. Right, yeah. It's, I think it's just mostly a terminology like this guy back in the day was a real rock and roller. Right, right. You know, yeah. It's that kind of thing. Yeah, for some reason it makes me think of soccer bullies, but I don't really know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very hooligany. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right so on. Hooligan, that's what they're called. Um, yeah. So what's up, man? What are, what are ah, not much. I mean, welcome to everybody watching to yeah. another video version of I Like to Movie Movie. Yeah. And um 
You know, so, I, we're just uh, we don't really have a theme this week. We're just Fourth of July going weekend. Through. So oh, Dan yeah. and I have a little extra time off and decided it was time to just like get together and put one of these together. Yeah, watching um, some stuff and chatting yeah. about the stuff that we watched. Actually, you know what's uh, this is unfortunate because by the time this video goes up, it'll have already happened. But you know what they're doing tomorrow? The uh, the racer wave crew is doing ID four dot MP four. Oh doing man, day, baby! Can you somehow make that seeable? I, I I might be able to try and maybe figure that out. Okay, because yeah. I would love to. I'm too behind now. Yeah, yeah. That's a I think great idea. Actually, I think they've done a couple actually that I have missed. Okay. Um, they, they've been putting like a lot of stuff together. I actually, I would really like to, uh, I mean, they're probably not watching this, but consider it a formal invite, but I'll, I'm actually going to reach out to one or two of them and see if they want to like do an episode of this with us sometime. I would uh, love to talk about like what, like how, how do you even begin making any yeah, of those? I, know. It, I, know. It, I don't, the whole thing is foreign to me. I want to talk to them about it, especially cause I, I think the one guy, Ariel Gardner, um, he, I, I like tweeted him. I was like, man, I've missed a couple of these. Are you ever going to make them available? And he was like, my dream is to have made enough of these that I can just have a 24 hour channel running all the time. Oh, that and would be awesome. Like, that would be amazing. That would, that be, would be awesome. I, I would just live on that channel. I would His just have, I would, Arrow Arrow Gardner? Gardner? I think no, that's is his... it arrow, like pointed arrow. Oh, sorry. Ariel, like the, uh, the little mermaid. Oh, Ariel Gardner. Yeah. Yeah. Ariel Gardner. Okay. I, I have a product in my kitchen called an Aero Garden. Okay. And it is like a combination uh, planter slash UV light that you put seed pods in. And like we're growing tomatoes in our kitchen right now. Okay. And so it was just a Christmas gift that was neat. But I thought if this guy's name or uh-huh. gal's name, I don't know anything about this person, it's is a, a play off of Aero Garden, yeah, yeah. then my respect has tripled. <laughs> No, uh, uh, but he's also, I think he's a director, too. If you look him up on um, uh, Vimeo. Uh, Vimeo? Yeah, Vimeo. Uh, you, you should be able to find some stuff that he's made. Uh, he made, like, an interesting short called, uh, I think it was just called Houses that I watched a little while ago that was pretty cool. Uh, okay. And, uh, yeah. He's, uh, okay, it's looking like, if it's the, the guy that you're saying... Actually, quite a filmography of shorts. Oh, and did an R Robocop remake section. Oh, he did. That's interesting. Yeah, that makes so, sense, actually. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Right uh, on. Yeah, so uh, interesting dude. Follow him on Twitter. And uh, I don't know, maybe we can get him on the show sometime. I'd like to talk to him. I bet uh, I already do follow him on Twitter without even realizing it. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't know, man. I, like One of the things I told you to watch, just because it literally came out right before we started recording... Was the uh, American an American pickle trailer? Yeah. Oh the yeah. Seth Rogen HBO Max movie. Uh, that, Seth you know, Rogen in his first Seth Rogen and Seth, Seth Rogen, Rogen is yeah, yeah it's his first one of those yes uh, and I, I think it looks pretty good you know it, it's uh, I think so too I like the Seth Rogen product generally you know what I mean it looks to be the Seth Rogen product and I like the Seth Rogen product so I'm I'm pretty excited you know I'm into it I think it looks good it seems yeah. to be pretty artistic I don't know who directed it I did not look that up yeah I, I wonder if he did let's find I just out. I was amazed that even in the trailer. The two Seth Rogans really yes. did already feel like different characters. Agreed. And I think that that's the toughest and most essential hurdle that any of those multiple role movies have to cover. Yes. And um, it's, you know, a movie does it quite well. Adaptation starring Nicolas Cage. Adaptation starring Nicolas Cage. And uh, Southland Tales starring ah. Sean William Scott. He plays twin brothers in that. I forgot he played two characters in that. I yeah. really remember nothing about that movie. Oh man, we're gonna have to do it for a show. I would a love proper to. show, but yeah, uh, that's a that's a hurdle that needs to be cleared in any of those person playing two people movies. And in the trailer, it seems pretty clear that he has done that. Um, yeah, I like the idea of Seth Rogen in like a generational conversation with his own elders and being able to sort of lovingly portray both present day him and what his elders would be while also lampooning both. And I yes. think that that's a really fun idea. And if they can pull that off, I am all into it. So this was directed by, I, I agree with you, by the way, I'm listening to you. Sorry. No, 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 that's uh, fine. Brandon Trost. And he has only, familiar. he's only directed a couple of things, some shorts uh, and an, an episode of future man, which is um, oh, okay. one of Rogan's great. projects. Uh, but He's been the cinematographer on apparently he's got like 93 cinematographer credits, uh, including the disaster artist. This is the end. 
Okay. Uh, he did Can You Ever Forgive Me? So he's worked with Rogan a bunch, like behind okay. the camera. Uh, the Night Before, so Neighbors 2, Popstar. He, yeah, he's, he's... Nice. MacGruber. Oh, yes. Yeah. Dude, he shot uh, some of the Pulse sequels. Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, into that. Yeah, so anyway, yes. Uh, I... I Wanted to talk about the trailer. Most funny. Of the... All those comedy movies that you listed, yeah. uh, like actually have a look to them. Agreed. Whereas so many comedy movies, it's just like, we, we're just getting the humor. It doesn't matter if it's well-directed. Yeah. And I think that in like, you know, kind of a post-Apatel, Rogan, that kind of crew thing, there has been, uh, I don't want to say an increasing, because, you know, like we don't want to forget about things like Dr. Strangelove. Sure. But there's been an increase in the idea of the studio comedy actually looking competent. Yeah, and so that I think speaks well to what this movie could look like. I mean, the opening of that tra- the thing that actually made me really want to talk about is the opening of the trailer looked to me like that movie Hard to Be a God. Yeah, it had yeah. that same like intense focus. Uh, Did you end up watching Hard to Be a God? I've seen the first like half hour, and then I okay. think so literally fell it? asleep. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. That movie is like one of those movies that I respect, even if I don't love, because yeah. by the end I was like, I, I don't even know what I just watched. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. man, did I watch it! <laughs> it's like yeah. that kind of thing. I mean, I liked what I saw, but it, it is like long and slow, and I definitely fell asleep. I think and never got back to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. but it, it's an impressive looking film, and I, I mean. What an interesting thing to uh, take a style note from for your comedy about a man that uh, gets pickled. Yeah, yeah. You know <laughs> what I mean? Is, I love the idea of something so high concept like that being played yes. straight. Yes. Uh, that is, like, fantastic that it doesn't seem that there's any sort of discussion about, like, but what's the science behind it? It's just right. like, this man is alive, he's back. Yeah. You know, just a man but- unstuck from time. And it's also, it's not the tone of, like, Anchorman or something, where it's like, what a weird, wacky world! Yeah, you yeah. Know? It uh, just seems normal. But yeah. I do also like, too, it's it's obvious that, that they're talking about, like, him being Jewish in it. Yeah. And a Jewish pickle at the Jewish deli. That is as, <laughs> as Jewish as it gets. And, yeah. uh, I mean, I'm sure it gets more Jewish. But, like, that's <laughs> as, as, you know, from my point of view, that's what I immediately think of uh, with a pickle, is the deli. Yeah, and yeah. so I just love the way that they tied that in, you know, yeah. rather than, oh, a cryogenic experiment gone wrong. He was <laughs> right. literally pickled. Beautiful. Yeah. It's very funny. But, yeah, uh, that's very clever. I also think it's interesting that, like, so this is coming out on HBO Max, and mm-hmm. they also are, like, putting some real money into Snyder's, um, uh, 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 like, Justice League retool. Uh, uh, you don't so- want to say Snyder Cut, do you? No, uh, no I, I, I guess not. I, but I was literally trying to think of the, the name Justice League. For oh, some okay, I couldn't yeah, think yeah. of that. That's uh, true. I honestly have not thought of it as Justice League in a while. I just no, thought of it as like, oh, the Snyder, Snyder Cut. cut. Yeah, yeah, it's become the Snyder Which Cut. Yeah. I cannot wait to see. I, I mean, the little like teaser thing that he showed off that has like that glimpse of Dark Side is very yeah. cool. It's uh, cool. Yeah. I, so I, mean, I, I, have, I'm, I have a feeling that it was like it was probably all set to be like a decent movie and right. then it fell apart and it became a movie that I enjoyed for what it was, but sure, it's not yeah. really a good movie. Right. And so I'm excited to see what could have been if it is indeed what was planned. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm interested whether it was what was planned or not. I'm definitely yeah. interested to see like w- what that ends up being. Yeah. Anyway, the thing about that Justice is like, movie. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, it's OK. The thing that I think is interesting, though, is like. We, I think, on this show have lament. I definitely have lamented this a bunch, and I think we've talked about this on the show. The sort of death of like the middle budget movie in general yeah. has kind of like gone away from the studio system. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I think for a little while, streaming services were thought of more like direct to DVD, like like the the original content that streaming services made. I yeah, think it was lesser profile stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was not. It, it was not thought of. It was thought of as lower tier. You know, what it I was mean? thought of as TV. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like and, similar to how we think of TV as this lower tier thing, even though it's not. It, you know, yeah. And and I don't think that these two movies you, uh, are are what I would necessarily hold up as like. And lo, the mid budget movie returns on stream. Yeah, yeah. I think there are other good examples of this that have already happened and are continuing to happen that we know about. But it's interesting. I think it's kind of cool actually that that's what these streaming services have kind of turned into is like de facto production houses yeah. that are kind of bringing back the mid budget movie oh yeah which we'll is get like just cool. like plain adult thrillers coming through yeah like that is just it's a it's an interesting co- i mean heck i watched i just watched yesterday the um that eurovision movie yeah which i'm actually excited to watch it's pretty good i mean you know yeah. it's, it's charming it's 35 to 40 minutes too long as all it's over two hours are 
<laughs> but it's it's very nice looking and it's a lot of fun and you know it's mm-hmm. it's got a couple big belly laughs and the music's great and Dan yeah. Stevens is Dan just Stevens, runs yeah. with the movie. Yeah. But it it's kind of one of those things like I don't I can't really see a Will Ferrell movie exploding the box office anymore. Right. Um, but he is now able to make this mid budget comedy movie that is whatever he wanted it to be without sure. the restrictions that to go to Netflix. And I looked at this movie and went, this movie would look fantastic on a big screen. Yeah. You know, well, it feels I mean, like, you know, it's, it's not any different than Step Brothers in terms of prestige. And it's, it's just not, a different movie. It's not that long ago that, uh, you know, what the hell was the ice skating movie called that he started? Oh, uh, uh, Blades of Glory. Blades of Glory. Right. Like this feels no different than that movie to me, yeah. right? Like, you, I, I probably could easily confuse those two movies just based on the trailers, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I don't think that movie made a ton of money either, but the, it was made at a time when a studio was still willing to put that kind of money oh, yeah. into a, a, a comedy, you know? There was a big and, turnaround because there's no production budget on that, yep. but Will Ferrell was such a name that you can pull in yeah. any amount of tickets for it. Yeah, so I don't Everyone know. wants to get together and quote it at some point, so they got to see it. I know. Well, that so that's what this trailer reminded me of. Is like this is a conversation we haven't had in a little while, and I think it's kind of interesting that that's where things have kind of shifted. It seems because mm-hmm. that streaming services are are kind of now making us those mid budget movies that we were kind of lamenting the loss of. And, it's and, bittersweet because yeah. I I want to see them on the big screen if I can. Yes, but I would rather live in a world where they exist than I see them on my iPad. Yeah. Than a world where they just don't exist. I, I think that any exhibition is good exhibition. Yeah. Um, and it's just going to have to be in a different arena that we preserve the theatrical experience. <laughs> yep. If, in fact, it can even be resuscitated. I but, know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I think it will be. I think it's just too big of a concept to go away. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so, too. But I, I really think it is. I, I don't think the theaters are going anywhere. It's yeah. just they might be out of commission for longer than we expect. But yeah, yeah. That's, that's just me. You're, you're probably right about that. It's not uh, going anywhere. Yeah, you know, and that's why I don't get mad that they keep announcing dates for Tenet, because <laughs> granted, at the at the bottom of it all, it is just a money decision. Yeah, but I like to think that there's a little bit of just hope put into these dates because yeah. the fact of the matter is, if it's unsafe to release that movie, they're definitely not going to. Right, it, they're going to hold out for as long as it takes. But I like the idea that they're trying to keep the idea exciting of. This is a movie you're going to want to see on the big screen, and here's when you can do it. Yeah. And, you know, if setting dates and moving them keeps those coals hot, I'm totally here for it because yeah. I want the theatrical experience to return, of course, once it is safe to do so. Yeah, yeah. Well, and like, I, I don't know. I feel like this week or, or the la- I feel like the last couple of months is what I mean, actually. I've been hearing about this American Pickle movie, and it always <laughs> gets brought up with like a little bit of disdain. Just, you know, the concept is, like, so stupid and silly. Like, like yeah, oh, yeah, great. Yeah. They gave Seth Rogen money to make his movie where a Jewish man gets pickled. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I, 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 you know, I kind of understand where that kind of, like, dismissive yeah, attitude yeah. about something like this comes from. But I actually it's kind also of... also a potentially reductive take. Because, like, yes, we don't know the yeah. content of the movie. Right, yeah. I agree. I mean, I, I'm, I'm always... If we're really trying to have that argument, I'm always on the side of, well, you haven't seen the movie yet, so shut your yeah, mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But no, um, I, I think you're right. I do get the jaded response to it. Yes, and I think yes. that that jaded response is also part of why that type of movie is now relegated to an HBO Max as opposed to a weekend box office. And that's why I wanted to bring it up, because I actually, to me, it's like, actually, this is kind of exciting, because it seems like this is evidence that, like... Actually, you're right. It is. This is a dumb movie. It's dumb that a movie like this should be spent. Somebody should spend money on it. So don't give it to a streaming service. They'll do it. Yeah, like, they'll do it. Great. Like thumbs up. I want more of that. Actually, like I, I would like to see some of the dumber movies that wouldn't get made otherwise get made. Absolutely. Somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. And it, and it's it'll be interesting to see how it affects tent poles, right. such as things like the Snyder Cut. Yes. Or there's always talks of, like, apparently Suicide Squad was originally a dark, fucked up movie. Right. And then in the wake of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians, they yeah. were like, let's turn it into a circus. Yeah. And then that movie was kind of middling. And so, you know, I don't like the idea that that filmmakers are, ad- like, directly addressing loud fans in terms of things like redoing Sonic yeah, or, right. you know, yeah. like, which whatever. I mean, like, I, I also don't care. But, yeah, like... Yeah. I, I'm I'm always been a, I'm always a champion for preserving the artist's vision. Yes. But then there's situations such as Justice League where it's like, well, the artist's vision didn't really 
didn't get anything. Yeah, right. And so, you know, whether whether or not it's right to go back and do it, I do like the idea that we could see, like, the idea of a director's cut is something that can come to streaming, whereas yeah. it was always just on DVDs and stuff like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like imagine if they went and said, "Oh, we want to, we want to uh, resurrect all of the cut gore footage from Friday the Thirteenth Part 4. Oh yeah. We're We'd not going to put that in the theater, but HBO Max is going to do it, and like that kind of thing is cool. I like that that opportunity may exist, and yeah. you know, maybe we'll see Trank's full Trent, uh, that Fantastic Four. I knew exactly what you were trying to say. That was very funny. Yeah, it. Tr- look at that. Yeah, that was, uh, that, sorry, that was why I started laughing because I heard Trank's fool and I was like, I know what he means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a yeah. No, but his full uncut Fantastic Four, like, which, you know, whether you want to see it or not is yeah. whatever. But I like the idea that, like, like uh, tent poles that didn't get their due could get a couple bucks thrown at them and find an audience. I know, yeah, I don't know. And, yeah, I don't know. It's just exciting to me that there's, I, I guess, like room for these movies to exist still. Mm-hmm. You know, there's in a, that's the silver lining to quarantine and pandemic overall is that weird innovation is just starting to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, we could have been doing Skyped calls and tripling our content years ago. Yeah. And we just never thought to until it became what we had to do. Yeah. And, you know, now we're on YouTube and doing that. Like, there's just so much innovation as the market shifts and. It's exciting to watch. I don't know. I'm with you. I think it's going to be cool. Yeah, it's cool. What's, uh, what, what, do you want to talk about some uh, 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 Hannibal, my friend? Hannibal? We can talk about some Hannibal. Because I, I know finished. You've quite uh, a bit of it now. I finished, uh, what's it called? Season two? Uh, season two. That's what it's called, the second yep. season, season two. Now, I finished season two. Uh, I haven't started season three yet because I just needed a TV break because yes. I wanted to watch some movies yes. and read some books. But yeah. uh, it's a good show. Yeah, did you like season two? I did like season two. There are two things that I think need to be addressed that I'm afraid won't be. Yeah. Um, one being, and I guess I'm going to be spoiling up through season two of this in this discussion. Sure, so if any yeah. listeners, uh, so it's one currently thing on Netflix. So if people want to watch it, yes, they can. please yep. do. So I'm about to drop two spoiler things for season two that I have questions about. Yes. go. So here it is. Spoiler one. If that was not Freddie Lowndes body in the wheelchair yeah. on fire, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm going to need to know whose body it is and where they got it from. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then uh, my second question is, if that was not, uh, I think, yeah, Freddie Lowndes that uh, Will fed to Hannibal, uh-huh. I'm going to need to know what kind of meat that was. Yeah. Because Hannibal ate it, and Hannibal, who I trust, would yeah. know if it was human, believed yeah. that it was human. So I am conditioned to think that it was human. And so it's, you know... I, I, I want to know those questions. Here's but if the they weird... don't answer them, I don't give a shit. I actually don't remember if they do or not. I feel like they do at least in one, at least one of those questions. I think does get answered. They do pretty much like anytime a question like that arises, I will get an answer to it. Sometimes yeah. ten episodes later, that's the so thing. I'm confident that they will. But also at the same time, like season two got a little batty. Yeah, and so it seems as if it got batty to the point where they might just, just assume that I'm not asking those questions and move forward, which is also fine by me, but I would like to know. Season three is going to get even better. Season three leans hard Mm. into being a baddie weird show. It Mm. gets like very, it gets more, I I would just say like psychedelic. Okay. I'm into that. And it's fun. It's really cool. And I like it a lot, but it loses a little bit of the like cat and mouse dynamic that I like so much in the first couple of seasons. Um, well, because now it's like, I mean, even though we go into it knowing that Hannibal is villainous, yeah. now it's like not a secret that Hannibal is villainous. And it right. ends with him essentially on the run. Yeah, yeah. With Agent yeah. Scully. Right, yes. Yeah, how great is she in the show, by the way? She's awesome. Yeah. I am so happy whenever I see her and stuff. I think she's great. And it's funny because when X Files first started, she like was not really that great. Right. Neither was Duchovny. And then that they, they almost like learned to act off one another. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm a terrible actor, so no, no, no sure, hardcore judgment. Yeah. But I guess maybe what I mean to say is that it's dated now. Yeah, yeah. And so, and then I watch her giving this like really dense performance of a character that isn't seen a lot. So I was yeah. very impressed and pleased to yeah. see her. She uh, she gets a lot more play in season three. You, you're nice. gonna get to spend time with her and, and really grow to like enjoy that character. Um, I really like all the characters. I think that's the fun of the show is the characters are really good. Yeah, I'm a little bit like. 
you know, I know that it's not canonically connected to things like Manhunter or right. the Hopkins series right. proper, but just the idea, like, we enter Manhunter and we know that Will Graham got a little too close. Yeah. He got a little too close. Yeah. So he stopped being a cop, but he's so good that we need him back. Yeah. And, like, now the, the Will Graham in the show is someone who should absolutely unequivocally spend the rest of their life in prison because he is a very bad, very unstable and very dangerous person who absolutely takes pleasure in murder. Uh (laughs) So it's like a little weird. uh, I'm going to have to work to separate this iteration of Will Graham from the one in the rest of the series because it's like, oh yeah, he had a tough time. Now it's like, oh yeah, he became a serial killer for real. Yes. And now he's a cop again. Yes. (laughs) Very strange. It's really strange. The show like, at a certain point I had to just go like this is the world of this show exactly you know? yeah uh to oh, be I'm able there. to yeah. Enjoy, yeah to be able to enjoy these sort of like you know uh, I I would say it's like it's actually not that dissimilar in tone from something like American horror story yeah. where it's like it's it's a it's soapy is the wrong word campy it's it's like it's kind of campy for It's like melodramatic camp Yeah yeah and I think yeah. it it also helps that like we talked about it on on the show before. Like one of the things in all of the Harris novels in the original series and in Manhunter is it ties the idea of there's a physical and fetishistic thrill to these primal urges that are either being uh, enacted upon in a cat and mouse chase, in an actual murder itself, mm-hmm. in a cathartic act of violence against a bad guy. They bring all that in there. And I think the fact that the show is just so fucking horny, yeah. uh, really all the time, kind of fixes a lot of those issues for me. Because yes. I go, this yes. is a world where everyone really does act on impulse, yes. or at least wears their impulse on their sleeve. Yeah. And that's so much fun that any logic issues that I have are really not worth uh, letting the show sink over. Because I, you know, I would like to see some questions answered, but if they're not, or if they, if the trade-off is losing some of that weird primal horniness to it, then I don't want it. Yeah, well, I, I, I like that, the way it is. It's got that thing where, like, the one of the underlying kind of concepts of the show is that, like, everybody on the show is, like, to some degree, like, a behavioral therapist. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And so, like, so, like, everybody is constantly evaluating each other and doing mm-hmm. so out loud. And so, like you kind of get the impression that part of the reason, as you're saying, like will is almost like allowed to like basically become a serial killer, but everybody still considers him to be good and safe Mm -hmm. is, is because they all talk out loud about how they're feeling and why they're doing the things they're doing. So there's like some in, in the context of the show that allows for there to be this weird agreement of like, well, sure. Will has become a serial killer, but he told us that he is yeah, yeah, yeah. and is t- like has told us it's he like doesn't the, want to be. It's like the I'm an asshole be. rule. Yeah, yeah. Where you go, hey, I'm an asshole. And you think he gives you license to then be an right. asshole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and like as long as he keeps saying like, but I don't want to be. It's yeah, like, yeah. Well, I guess it's, it's okay. Fine. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think it's that's kind of fun too because like a lot of it could run up against this idea that it's like it has like kind of a shitty view of therapy. Yeah. But I think that because everybody's posturing, because they are both reading someone and and being read, yeah. it then becomes so cartoonish that it's it feels less of a, like, oh, man, therapy is, like, you're getting your head shrunk, right, and right. more an advocation of, like, good therapy actually would fix this. Yes. <laughs> like yeah, they yeah, could yeah, actually yeah. help each other if that became yeah. a thing. Yeah, well... Oh man. I, th- okay. So the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about, cause I think you're far enough in the show now that we can okay. talk about this a little bit is I brushed up against the idea a lot early on that they just kept meeting these new serial killers all the time. Yeah. And then I love that. Like eventually, I think it's like sometime in season two, they get like pretty express about this. Like they're, they're like pretty direct that that's because Hannibal Lecter is all of these people's therapist. Like, yeah, it sort of gets there. Is all these people's therapist, and also seems to copycat every murderer he comes across, just yes, to, right. to yes. throw, you know, uh, a fly in the ointment. Right, right. And uh, they didn't quite explicitly get there, but like, I mean, actually, they did explicitly get there, but it hasn't become a central concept yet. But that totally works for me. 
Yeah. Because it is an extremely dangerous place to live because it's just filled with serial killers. I mean, I would say it does, I don't think it gets any more direct than it already has. That doesn't become a more central plot mm. necessarily. But I just love that idea that like at a certain point I was like, I, I was no longer upset that the show kept giving me more serial killers because eventually they revealed that the background of at least half of them is that they've worked with Hannibal before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that's just and he'll what make he you does. kill. Yeah, he just loves to manipulate. It's the same people as the uh, future 2015 has all of like Doc Brown tech in it because he's just been leaving pieces throughout history. Right. And yeah. so just like yeah, it just works like that. Yeah. I I um uh, oh I had a thought connected to that. Um, it's okay. Yeah. Whatever. I just but yeah, that's I think right. that's so funny that it's it's just the most dangerous place to live because yes. there's just serial killers everywhere. But I, after a while it just like, I just went with it because it was like, nah, we need murderers every week. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. it be, it's the same X files thing where it's like for a while in the X files, the rule was supernatural thing happens. Uh, Mulder sees it and then it goes away. And then Scully runs up like, Oh, I was just locking the car. What did I miss? <laughs> like, Oh, you missed alien ghosts yeah. and like it just keeps happening and it's like not only are they in the most haunted place ever <laughs> all the time but only one of them ever sees it yeah. and then it starts to become a feature not a bug where you realize right. it's you know like because he's open to it he sees it you know blah 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 yeah, yeah, and yeah. so it works yeah yeah i think it'll be I, funny i would appreciate I, it if once when will uses his superpower of being able to like not psychically but almost psychically into it after the fact the exact actions and motivations of every killer yeah i would love if he was just completely dead wrong once yeah yeah i think that would make the show strong is if he did that and it turned out like where he was like no there was actually only one gunman instead of two right and then it's like turns out there were four gun you know like something like that yeah i can't yeah i don't remember i mean it is a thing where you could also imagine like that Hannibal eventually gets to know him well enough that Hannibal might be able to predict some of his predictiveness yeah, and, and yeah. thus be able to use it against him. Do you know what I mean? And I guess he has been wrong a couple times where it's like he imagines what the killer's doing, but he just wrongly imagines who the killer is because right. it's actually Hannibal. Right. But I don't know. I would just love for him once because he walks in and he'll always be like, I walk in. I'm immediately yeah. horny about what I'm about to do. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, isn't yeah. about violence. This is about power. But yeah. like, what if it was just some guy who was just like, oh, I don't like this. She was my second grade teacher and she called me fat. So I'm going to shoot her in the mouth. You know, yeah. It's just like a completely different motive and method than yeah. to what Will sees. That is funny. He, yeah. Um, have you gotten to Verger yet? Yes. Verger has cut his face off. Uh, completely. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah so, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I like that they added Verger's sister as played by Ginger Snaps. <laughs> um, I, now I'm going to forget her name, but yeah, I don't know name. that was kind of cool. Um, yeah, I I really like uh, what's that actor's name that plays Verger? Michael Pitt. Michael Pitt. Yeah, I yeah. think he. I always like him. He just has pure cocaine energy, like no matter yeah. who he's playing, and I think it works actually really well in the universe of Hannibal to have this like really heightened psychopath you know what i mean it, like mm -hmm. he's like he yeah i don't know there's something about him that makes sense in the world of hannibal i like him as an opposite to hannibal because hannibal's able to get away with being a psychopath because he's really good at covering it right whereas verger is able to get away with being a psychopath because he's just padded by money yeah and yeah, so yeah. whereas hannibal is very secretive and then every once in a while he'll just be like by the way, I did this murderous thing. Like, Ooh, <laughs> Michael Pitt's just like, yes, I murdered 10 people, but look, here's a million dollars. Would you like to see my piggies? And yeah. it's just a different type of the same evil. Yeah. And I, I like that. And they clash over that. They yes. really don't like each other. Yeah. And I think it's almost because like, you know, uh, Verger's jealous of Hannibal's, he has like class aspirations to Hannibal and yes. Hannibal's jealous of the fact that he almost has to be a closeted murderer when yeah, this yeah. guy's just out there expressly murdering because he can afford to. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Hannibal's whole thing, at least as he's characterized in the show is that he basically doesn't like rudeness. Yes. That's yeah. like the thing that crosses him the most. And Verger is pure id rudeness. You know what he I mean? He has one line that he says something to Will, where he's just like, it was rude, and blah, blah, blah. And he's yeah, like, yeah. and Will, that is why we must eat the rude. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It's then like, again, we are living in a world where we're chanting, you know, eat the rich. So right. maybe it's not so fucking awful. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. So I I love the thing. Okay. So the thing that's going to make you the most mad about the whole show is the thing that made me the most mad about the whole show, which is Verger will continue to be in the show, but he will not be played by Michael Pitt from this point. Uh, on. they put him behind the uh that mask, which is a great design. Yeah. They actually they it's even weirder than that. Actually, it's yeah. it, it, uh, But anyway, it just it stinks because Michael Pitt is so distinctive. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. in his performance in that role. And the guy that uh, comes in to, to, to pitch for him is, like, fine. But, uh, you know, just can't match that, that energy. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. I, uh, I liked Michael Pitt a lot in it. Um, I think he's, like, he, he's always good at, like, playing just, like, the maniac. Yeah. He's great in the American Funny Games. He's great in Hedwig and the Angry Inch. He just, yeah. like, does these weird... I mean, he was great in Boardwalk Empire for the yeah. short while he was on it. Uh-huh. And uh, he's really good, but... I did feel a little bit of it of his performance was like post Heath Ledger Joker. Yeah, yeah. And like, and so it was just one of those things where I was just like, I know he's he's a a good enough actor that I wouldn't accuse him of actually riff, riffing Joker. Yeah, but yeah. I guess just we live in a world where that's in the ether now, so it's hard sure. not to see when it's similar. But at the same time, like we didn't get enough of that Joker, so keep yeah. it coming, you know. But I do I like some of the mannerisms Pitt brings to that character, yeah. like the oh yeah the constant. Who's doing mm-hmm. this with his face? Pushing his like all Can the, the time. Can the rest of the show be you just doing that <laughs> into the camera? <laughs> Can we get some inhales? <laughs> yeah, I love that stuff. Like I really like yeah. some of those mannerisms that he brings to it. I, I I think it's a lot of fun. I hear what you're saying though. Like it, there mm. there is something. Uh, if you could call the Joker Muppety, there's a bit of that same kind of Muppety yeah, yeah, flavor yeah. to what he's doing. You know, um, mm-hmm. but um, uh, actually, you know, it's funny. Last night, Jenna and I watched Shoot 'Em Up. Because oh, yeah. uh, she has, she's writing a piece on that. Yeah. And uh, that I had the same thought about Paul Giamatti in oh, yeah. that movie. And Paul Giamatti is just very much a post-Joker kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But what's weird is I, I don't know. The, that was 2007. When was Dark Knight? 08. Okay, so I Paul think. Giamatti actually comes first. I think. And I've always said that since they couldn't get Heath Ledger back for three uh, due to contract yeah, stuff and being deceased... Um, <laughs> I always thought that like it would be really cool if for the third entry they got rid of Bale and just had like an old man Batman and then oh. bring in Giamatti to play old man that Joker Ooh. just because they're doing a similar voice. Like but that. once again, I was watching Shoot 'Em Up and going, this feels very like the Joker to me. And then lo and behold, it was first. So yeah, yeah. you know, it, it couldn't have been influenced by that. So right. you know, my my biases of uh, uh against Pitt might just be unfair. So yeah. No, and I won't... honestly, he is fantastic in it, and it just—I re- just remembered that Ginger Snaps is Catherine Isabel. Oh yes, yes, that's correct. the actress's name. Yeah, she's—I actually—I really like her on uh, Hannibal. I think she's very good. Um, yeah. Uh, I have one more Hannibal question, which is: Do you like the Natalie episodes? Have you felt? Yeah. Have they felt as distinctive as I described them? Not really. Okay. I think that they're really good at. I, I think that they're really good at capturing the tone. Yeah. The only difference that I've noticed is that when it gets surreal, yeah. the surrealism looks more digital okay. and in and in a good way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's where I would notice. But if you played like a couple episodes back to back and said, you know, two of these are Natali, I don't know if I'd be able to guess. Interesting. Yeah. But I think at this point, at the end of season two, I think he's only directed two or three episodes. Oh, that's interesting. He, dir- he so must I think a lot three might be three where that. that jumps in. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I looked up every director because there's like three or four. There's like Michael Nyman, David yep. Slade, yep. Um, Vincenzo Natali, and then there was one more yeah, that there's, I can't remember. There's another person that directs a lot of episodes. You're right. Yeah, yeah. and so and like Slade sort of seems to be the. Uh, the Ryan Johnson of Breaking Bad to it, where it's like, oh, the finale's here, get Slade back. Yep, you know, like, he's yep. the flavor. And um, so that might change in season three, but I, I really think there might only be two Natalie episodes. But because I, I would look for the director's credit, I made it a point to like try and embrace what was different about it. And while there was a difference, I just don't know if it was quite as stark yet. I got so you. I'm eager to see season three, especially since you said it gets more surreal. It does, I yeah. would like to see how how that style of his digital surrealism comes into play and really, you know, dominates. And I guess my memory of it is, um, that like, it may not be that, you know, the, like the entirety of an episode is, is as distinctive as I I might be trying to make it sound, but the moments where it like, where you can feel Natalie has done something, it like you can feel Natalie has like taken control of something for those moments. You know what I mean? Cool, Where, cool. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know that I feel that with any of the other directors on the show. They're mm-hmm. all sort of 
doing the David Slade. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just like keeping the, David the status Slade, quo. You know? And I feel like Natalie has like, there is a distinctive flavor to those episodes, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know how to describe it more than that. Uh, but I, I think that'll probably come to fruition in the third season. Yeah. Because I trust your judgment on it, but I just yeah. I don't think I've seen enough of his work in it to even really figure out what the difference is. I think he might also end up being the guy that directs like some of the big the big like shift episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the course of the season, so they might so even he have becomes that... the Ryan Johnson. Yeah, they might even have that flavor just because the storytelling actually has it too. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm into it. I I love it. I love that like like when the when the Freddie Lowndes fake death happened. Um, they use the same death from Manhunter yes, and yep. Red Dragon and all you know that kind of stuff. So I love that they invoked that imagery and then kind of pulled the rug out and was like, oh yeah, but we're not actually telling that story, right? And right. so that's fun because it excites me as someone who's relatively familiar with the series to be like, oh cool, all of my preconceptions can be thrown out the window. I can now be surprised by this show. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, there was a piece of me that was like, oh, I would have loved to see Manhunter done this yeah, way, but yeah. I, I do prefer it the way it is. Yeah. I would also love to see if maybe they just tie it in that uh, because of that death in the newspaper, the Tooth Fairy was like, I'm going to take somebody out like that, too. <laughs> or I'm going to kill Freddie Lowndes for real like that. Right, right, you know, right. And so then it still fits in canonically. It, it's yeah. whatever. I, I mean, I you know how I am with canon. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Just like yeah. do it good. Well, they they do. I mean, I don't think this is a spoiler. They do do the like the Red Dragon storyline in the next. Okay, season. so they do so you, Tooth Fairy and stuff. Yeah, you will get that nice. stuff uh, within you know the show's version of that stuff, which is mm. certainly the show. You know mm. what I mean? Like the, yeah, the show yeah. does a good job of always sort of like taking those elements and then kind of spinning them in their yeah, own. Yeah, direction. yeah. But and that's I really liked the idea of bringing in Mason Verger because like yeah. Verger doesn't enter the books or the movies until the movie Hannibal. Yeah, he's like, late, and even then, right? he's just like a color character where it's like, yeah. oh, he's a window into Hannibal's past. That he he had a patient that he was so good at manipulating him, he got him to cut his own face off. Right, you right. know, and so like that, and so it just meant to to add depth to the depravity of Hannibal. Right. And so here to have it turned into a fun multi-episode arc was yes. really a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's That's just super cool. I agree. And so they're and taking established pieces and doing new things. Or that shit that I just like every, like, especially in season two with every successive episode, I was like, I cannot fucking believe this was on television. Every, yeah. every time. It's like, how was this on TV? I was talking so to uh, Kevin Lau about it. I was like, because yeah. he's a big TV guy. I was like, oh, I've been watching Hannibal. Did you watch that? And he goes, I started it a few years ago, but it was too gross. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah I, I get it. There's, it's wild. I, I have no limit to yeah. uh, my ability to watch violence yeah. on screen. Yeah. It's just not going to – it can fuck with me, but I don't care. I, I will chase it. Right. There were a couple things in there where I was like, oh, Like I, I stopped eating where I was like, yeah, I'm going to finish my meal later. I'm going to fridge this for now. Yep. <laughs> you know? It's pretty gross. It's yeah. gross, man. It's pretty gross. Uh, oh, there was a, another actor showed up that I that I was like, who is that guy? Why do I recognize him? And I'm not going to remember his name. But do you remember the the murderer that had like a, a robotic bear suit that he just like munches you to pieces oh with? Oh, my God. Yeah. And I then Hannibal that. and Will killed him together. And then Hannibal made him into a statue. Right, right, which I right. love too because uh, Cynthia Nixon's character like the high high up in yes, charge yes. she even like points out she was like w- Will did that to yeah, his body yeah, yeah, and like yeah. Lawrence Richard was like well it was self defense and she's like he, <laughs> he made him into a gruesome statue <laughs> but that guy that murderer was the husband in Ready or Not yes yes wait oh fuck hold on uh, I'm gonna find Ready or Not, and we're gonna look up his name because I know who you mean, but I wanna, uh, because I know him from other stuff too. Ready or Not, uh, what the hell is that guy's name? Oh, uh, um, is it this guy, Henry Zerny? It is. I mean, if we go to Ready or Not, he's probably credited just behind uh, Samara Weaving. His name is Mark O'Brien. Oh, Mark O'Brien, that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Henry Zerny is uh, what's his name from uh, Mission Impossible. Yes, right, right. Um, not Crycheck. Crycheck's from X Files. Why does that keep coming up? Kittredge. Kittredge. That's it. That was Kittredge. close. They should bring back Kittredge for uh, MI. What does it be? Seven now. 
I think actually they may have announced they are. I'm going to touch my fingertips I, I think, together like that. I think that's actually a thing. I think you're right. I'm so I think into that's that. happening. Sold. I think so. Sold. I'm in. Um, uh, oh, so, uh, dude, the other thing, hold on, because I realized since we have a video show now, I can do things like this. <laughs> the other thing that I watched this week, I finally, so my oh. grandparents just moved recently. This. Yeah, my grandparents moved recently. VHS. And so I took a VHS player and a TV from them, and I rigged up my Godzilla VHS. This is this the sea monster. Yeah, so this is actually Abira Horror of the Deep. That's uh, nice. the actual title of this movie, and I have it on a nice, clean VHS from uh, from Good Times Home Video. Hey, uh, I had some there. Good Times Home Videos back in the day. Yeah, buddy. Uh, they oh, have a great awesome. logo on the front of the tape here. I thought this was so funny. Hold on, I'm just showing VHS tapes on YouTube right Look now. Look at that. Good times. Man. Yeah. Ooh. And it's the best length that any movie could ever be. 88, 88 minutes. minutes. Ooh, baby. You think that's why they made the car have to go 88 miles an hour in uh, uh, Back to the Future? It never we- occurred to me before, but now I will accept no other explanation. <laughs> uh, yeah, but then again, the- Robert Zemeckis, as of late, is not someone that I would trust with the length of a movie. Yeah. I feel like that's an instinct that he either does not have or is lost. 188 minutes. No, yeah. no less. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have a bunch of these. I I bought like a box full of Godzilla VHS tapes for like yeah, twenty dollars on uh, Twitter, and uh, so yeah, oh, I got. Uh, yep, on Twitter. So yeah, I How got to. It? Uh, it was great. I got I got a bunch of them over here. I have what uh, six nine. I have like ten or eleven of these. Nice. Uh, and uh, how does that all... one stack up in Godzilla entries? Oh, actually, that's why I chose this one. I really like this movie. This one's pretty fun. It's actually like doesn't have a ton of Godzilla stuff in it, but it's just like mm. a fun, weird kind of like romping sixties adventure movie That's uh, fun. that has a great scene where Godzilla and Abira, who's like Abira is like a, a crab monster. Yeah. Uh, crab they, people. they, uh, they take a rock and they just hit it back and forth at each other for a while as if it's like volleyball. That's incredible. Uh, yeah. It's awesome. Uh, nice. It is fun funny thing. that some of those Godzilla movies I like really don't have a lot of Godzilla. Yeah. And like sometimes it's like a bummer, but then other times it's just a better movie for it. Right. Yeah. You know, like you look at Shin Godzilla and like that is minimal Godzilla and it's correct. Yes. And yeah. then like something like that. You know, I'm trying to think of, see, I don't know any of their names. I'm trying to think of a minimal Godzilla one where I was just like, fucking get, kick over a skyscraper, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially some of like the '60s and '70s era has like a, a lot that are like that, where you're just like, "All right, let's uh, come on, we're spinning our wheels, let's go. What are we doing?" <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, so I and actually, it was fun to watch it on VHS because like I've only I I have that Criterion collection of these movies. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's all like the original Japanese cuts, which are longer and you know, um, I, I I think better generally, like they're better movies yeah, yeah. actually, but. This is the fun way that most Americans got to see these movies. It yeah, yeah, like yeah. 88 minute American dubs. It'd be funny so, if they were all 88 minutes. I, I bet they are. I bet they're all. I bet they all come in under 90. I guarantee yeah. it. I guarantee they all come in under 90. Um, but so it was fun to watch it that way. I don't know. I had like a good time uh, watching just this like dumb American cut of this movie. And it's I, so you know, fun it's, watching things like VHS. It's yeah. like the same way that like if you listen to a record and go, "Ooh, it's more tactile over a digital." Right. Even like right. gives a shit. Yes. Even though like VHS was the less tactile version to earlier formats like film, it yep. still holds on to a little bit of that nostalgic tactility where you're like, <laughs> yeah. "I don't even know if that's a word, but I love it." Tactility. Yeah. Um, it, it is really a lot of fun to watch. I, did, yeah, you have to, uh, did you have to fuck with the tracking? <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> actually. So here's the thing, is because this all came from my grandparents, like, they refused to give up old technology, which means yeah, yeah, yeah. their VHS player is probably one of the the most recently new-built VHS players. Nice. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Whenever they built one new last, that's what this one is, you know? That's so And they funny. probably only ever put two tapes in it, ever. So we like, will upgrade our technology. We will not upgrade the... We will not change our technology. Right, exactly. So it's like, this is probably actually the best fucking VHS player anyone in America owns right now. You know what That's I mean? So, and it's yours. So like, yeah, exactly. So like, I didn't have to share... And actually, this tape is in really good condition. I don't know that they all are, but this one was. So mm. I did not need to touch the tracking. That's so much fun, though. That's such a cool novelty. 
I know. Like, if you said to everyone, like, hey, come over so we can watch some Godzilla movies, you'd get 10 people. But if you were like, we're going to watch a bunch of Godzilla tapes, you would get, yep. like, 15 people. I know. <laughs> so it's, like, I know. pretty cool. <laughs> I know. Yeah, so that was fun. Uh, nice. I enjoyed that. And then, I, um, I, go. Oh, no, go, go for it. No, no, no. What do you got? What do you got? I, I was just going to share. I had I had a crazy nightmare last night. Whoa. And even though I don't like people talking about dreams... Uh, it's just annoying. There's an aspect to this dream that I thought was very relevant to films because in this dream, I was visiting my parents' house and I was asleep at the time that the murderers from the Rob Zombie uh, original films showed up at their house and started fucking with shit. Okay. So Captain Spaulding and the Baby Firefly, hell, so Otis speak. Firefly. Yes, yeah. I didn't want to say Three from Hell because uh, Three from Hell does not have Captain Spaulding in it oh, very right. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, at the time, very um, old, sick man, Yeah, what's right? his name was yeah. ill. Sid and Hague. Um, Sid Haig. But this movie, this movie, this dream that I had was uh-huh. based around him. And there's a portion of it that I was like, my brain came up with something that sounds like it is ripped completely from a Rob Zombie script. Uh-huh. And because in the dream, I was I was waking up and I found out that they were trying to put me to sleep to do surgery on me. Okay. And I, now I ultimately escaped in the dream and blah, blah, uh-huh. blah. Um, and uh, I have an image in my head of baby chasing me, but she was wearing like like nurse scrubs, but they were like kind of sexy, but completely covered in blood and guts. Okay. But the surgery that they were trying to pull was Captain Spaulding wanted to have my balls grafted to his head. Why? So that, (laughs) this is insane, so that in a situation where somebody offers him something in exchange for getting out of, like, him killing them, they'd be like, but I'll do this for you. And he'd be like, well, I need that. Like, I need a set of balls on my head. (laughs) And that was the whole reason they were doing it. And my brain came up with this. I was like, that sounds like a Rob Zombie script. Uh, Good work, unconscious me. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was something that I watched recently. (laughs) Based on the fact that he was too old and sick to do much in Three from Hell, I'm surprised that that is not actually what happens in Three right? from Hell with his character. And I can see him with some balls on his head yeah. and always keeping it aside and then pointing to him and doing the thing. And people <laughs> having that, oh shit, we're. Because all those movies live and die on the moment where the victims go, shit, there really is no way out of this. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So, and like that's just a cartoon version of that. Yeah. But as for movies I've been watching, I kind of like did a lot. There's one that I'd love to talk about. But I, I feel like it's it's kind of under embargo. It's not under embargo, but I'm under embargo. I don't know. But I, I'll just say I'll say this. Uh, Relic is great. I think we are going to get to watch that soon, I think. Definitely do. It's yeah, really, really yeah. cool. It yeah. does the Babadook, what that did for, like, stress and anxiety. Uh, this did it for dementia. Okay. Cool. And so it's like, oh, I'm signed out of my letterbox. What the shit? You know when that happens? Yeah, it probably means they just updated the app or something. Yeah, yeah. So what did I watch? I mean, I just did both uh, Escape movies. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm with you. I like uh, L.A. better than New York. I watched L.A. Uh, literally just a couple hours ago, and uh, it it just rips. I mean, it's, it's so certainly fun. dated, yep. but it's so much fun. It's and a blast. it's just like, it's just more, ex- it's the same movie, essentially. They just yeah. take all the beats and do it again. It has a little bit of a meta text quality to it. Yeah. But um, I will say, this is the movie I want to talk about. I rewatched a movie from my childhood that uh, I saw in the theater when I was like, I think seven years old when it came out, and was just obsessed with like the imagery of it. Dick Tracy. Oh, yeah, okay. And I think I saw that as a kid too, but I don't really remember it. Loved it as a kid. Well, not really loved it as a kid. Like, loved the product of Dick yeah. Tracy as a kid. Wanted the talking watch. Yeah, I was yeah. Dick Tracy for Halloween one year. When I think in first sure. grade, I was Dick Tracy. And so it was, like, a cool thing. I remember it was tied into McDonald's, and you could win yep. one of the talking watches. I remember watches, that, Although, I think it just lights up. Um, yeah. it, it was just a cool thing. And I, I didn't have any concept of what Dick Tracy was or what the source material was or anything. And I remember seeing the movie as a kid, and I think I... I didn't really know how to process it. So, like, I liked it because I knew that I liked Dick Tracy things, and this was the Dick Tracy thing. And I might have watched it on home video once or twice and just kind of... It never quite resonated probably as hard as I wanted it to, despite being wild. I I am pleased to report that that movie is perfect. Yeah. It's 
perfect. That's... Uh, I loved every minute of it. Warren man. Beatty directed that movie? Warren Beatty directed right? it. Um, and I was reading up on it, and everybody who worked with him on that movie was like, he's an insane person. <laughs> he's, he's insane. Like Danny Elfman, a verified insane person who yeah. did an amazing score for it. Uh, he was just like, dude, that guy's insane. <laughs> Purely insane. But it's the kind of insane that, like, you know, he's he's definitely an old, you know, an a uh, old school Hollywood dude. So I'm yeah, sure yeah. that the the methods to his madness aren't always altruistic. Sure. But this is the kind of movie that I was watching. I'm like, this took an insane person to make. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the tone of it is completely unique, and my understanding of the source comics is that it is sort of heightened looking, but right. it's definitely meant to be in the real world and so like right, right. characters like flat top the the gangster with the flat top of his head in a comic strip is depicted literally but we would understand in real life is just someone with like you know a boxy yeah. haircut and all that right right but in this movie he's uh oh what is his name he's from raising arizona he's in a uh, the rob zombie from hell movies um i don't know i forget his name Hold but on. It's him under the most insane prosthetic makeup. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's they they really lean into the idea that this is a living cartoon and everything happens and that happens in this world is cartoony. Everything is heightened, everything. So, you know, like, whereas if you were to make a if you were to take the character of Lips Manless, who's supposed to be a big, chunky, you know, kind of always frowning Italian guy that stuffs his face, pasta and all that, you would hire Paul Sorvino. And yeah. they did. Yeah. But then they added this crazy, almost predator-like gullet to, uh, not, you know, it's not, but like just a really crazy prosthetic to Paul Sorvino so that he looks like an actual cartoon. Okay. And so the fact that everybody's acting like an actual cartoon, the city yeah. is almost entirely painted backdrops that make absolutely no effort not to look like painted backdrops. It's just a crazy world, and I am, as the kids say, here for it. It was so good, dude. Uh-huh. Nuts. I'll have to check it out. William it's Forsythe goopy. is who you're thinking of, by the way. William Forsythe is who I'm yeah. thinking of. But it's like, it's brilliant, it's goopy, it's like really violent, and just oh, like that's interesting. weird horny. Yeah. And, uh, but and all it was the marketed to kids, right? It was marketed to kids. I mean, yeah. it's a PG movie, and right. Madonna's tits are out at one point. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's, it's wild. I, I just... But like I don't under I would love to know more about the production of it because yeah, yeah. it's truly batty and it's just a strange place in time. But like it also has Stephen Sondheim original compositions in it. Really? Yeah. There's 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 no like big like show stopping musical yeah, numbers, yeah. but like there's a couple songs that Breathless Mahoney sings. That's Madonna's character, okay. and her character, uh, you know, sings these songs that are like original swinging ragtimey Sondheim yeah. songs. And uh, but it, and everybody's in it. I mean, Pacino's the bad guy yeah. under insane makeup. I think he was Oscar nominated for it. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dustin Hoffman's in it. He's Mumbles. Yeah, yeah uh, right, right. It's just crazy hype. I know the cast is nuts. Just bonkers, man. But just a really bonkers movie that came together. It, I compare it to Speed Racer in that you go, the people who made this clearly understood what to do with the source material. Yeah. Clearly understood how to turn it live action without betraying what was so special about it not being live action right right and perfect in the way that it's like you're, you're just never gonna make a speed speed racer movie that is more of a speed ma- speed racer movie than the wachowskis did mm-hmm. you are never gonna make a dick tracy movie that is more of a dick tracy uh-huh. movie than warren Beatty's dick tracy movie it's just fantastic it's, you'd love it dude it, i was gonna wild. say this sounds like something that i would love it's insane. Yeah. And and it was something that I didn't even know if I wanted to watch. I was like just kinda like tired, not really feeling like paying attention. And I was like, oh, we'll see what this is. It's like hour forty, let's do it. <laughs> and within ten minutes I was like, This is it's it's just bonkers. Yeah. Like I have a picture pulled up here. One of the uh one of the uh uh gangsters is named Little Face. <laughs> And because they're all literally named after right. what they look like, what it's like that's to be. that's little that's face. Great, he's got a little face. That's so funny. <laughs> you know, like everything's heightened. Um, what was Al Pacino's character's name? It is. A, oh man, what is his name? Hold on, I had it up here. Uh, Big Boy Caprice. Big Boy Caprice, and so like this is what. He looks like he's got oh, this yeah. ridiculous chin on it, 
and like there's there's this scene where he's he is running a nightclub where breathless breathless mahoney performs and so they're doing a song and her and all of her little sexy lady dancers are dancing and he's this like hunchback guy and he's singing it with them and he's slapping their asses and like just <laughs> being the most like just the biggest pig imaginable uh, it just but it's him like having fun and dancing <laughs> yeah. and ah, singing the songs and just being this like misogynistic disgusting gross dude who just is treating these women like shit but is like relishing doing it and yeah. Pacino having fun. I, I think now as an adult, I realize how funny Pacino's being in a lot of his movies when we used yeah. to take him seriously and he's being really funny here. And it is just the, the powerful combination of Warren Beatty being an insane director and telling him to do that. Yeah. And then Pacino being an insane person and doing that snowballs into just like this bonkers thing that I simply could not believe I was watching. It, it's, <laughs> Dick Tracy is something, man. You you gotta watch it. I'll have to watch it. Yeah, it sounds fun. Is it wait, is it available anywhere right now? Um, I watched it on what did I watch? I think it's on HBO Max. They have oh, a great sweet. library. That's um, what I heard. It was on firing up that just watch. Oh, I love that website. Justwatch.com, folks. Check it out. It is on yeah, HBO Max. Awesome. So, oh, and I think it's, oh, no, sorry. It's only on Amazon through HBO. But, yeah, it's on HBO. And it's good, man. And, cool. and it's just, it's got energy. And it, it the color, you'll, the, I think that's the thing you'll like the most. The color palette is just phenomenal. That's cool. The whole thing glows and pops and Love dips that. from, like, it, like it, it sometimes looks like a Partridge Family bus. And other times it looks downright vapor wavy. It, it's uh -huh. cool, man. That's cool. I liked it a lot. Yeah, Love definitely it. recommend uh that's uh the only other thing i want to talk about is tori and i are almost done watching neon genesis evangelion the uh i hear great things i've never seen it it's the anime that everybody has seen from like the yeah. 90s uh and is great like it, it is as good as everybody has told me it is over the years it's like it really takes advantage of the the square tv format in like mm -hmm. in, in uh its design it also is like anime kind of often you can tell that they're stretching their budget really far in anime a lot of times. So there will be like lots of sequences where like not much actually moves within the frame, you know, cause they're trying mm -hmm. to like save money or whatever. Yeah. 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 This show is like that, but I've never seen a show that does that artistically. Mm -hmm. Like the, the I think they, that's something anime like is, is more minimalist than people give it credit for because yeah. it maximizes little things like that yeah it's i mean it's like so well done in that regard like anytime the motion stops you're like oh god why did they stop the motion you know yeah, yeah, yeah. like lean into it instead of it's probably also just a production thing but like they just artistically wield those limitations in like mm -hmm. really cool ways and it's what also era like is it from so it's i think early 90s like okay. early to mid 90s um the dick tracy years yes yeah exactly the dick tracy years it is dude it's like uh, it's very much my thing. It's got a lot of Godzilla elements to it. It's literally, nice. but but it's also like super Christian in a lot of weird ways. Okay. It is literally the story of angels attacking us and us being technologically far enough along to go, you know what? We're canceling God's apocalypse. We're going to fight back. That's and so, so cool. We build... Tonight we are canceling right. the apocalypse. Yeah. It's, I mean, they have not expressly said this in the show yet, but I kind of literally think it might be about like, the rapture starts to happen and we decide to fight back. Nice. I, I think that might like kind of literally be what it's about. I'm not exactly sure, but anyway, it's like got these. That's big... a great twist on the just alien invasion trope. Yes, of yeah. we have to put up a fight. That's right, cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And it's you like think you... of like holy stuff as unfightable. It's God. Right, it's fate. Right. Right. Yes, I love yeah, that. Yeah. That's really it's cool. Pretty neat. And like, I had no idea what it was about. Okay. I know. Yeah. And it's it's not like expressly about that, but it's all in there, dude. They're constantly yeah, referring yeah. to the Dead Sea Scrolls. Have like foreseen this and stuff like that. It's like it's very gets into like heavy Christian mythology. Like the deeper it goes, it's pretty cool. But the uh, the thing that I like about it is like it's kind of got a lot of kaiju type elements. Like mm. it's uh, the the angels are basically kaiju. And mm -hmm. uh, what we use to fight them, we call them Avas, are basically big mech suits that people have to get in to fight these I big things. I love it. But the crazy thing is, like, the the I, I actually think the reason that I love the show so much is that, and we're almost done with the show, and they still have not explained this. The only people that can pilot these are children. They oh, wild. Only, only teenagers can pilot them. So 
the show is extremely horny and extremely depressed because it's about teenagers that are extremely horny and extremely depressed. I love it. So it's like, it's a lot of melodrama. Everybody is like super horny all the time and like can't get over themselves or how they feel about each other. And then also have to literally battle angels. It's when like, I was it's that awesome. age, anytime I felt anything outside of the norm, I was always told, eh, it's not the end of the world. Right. And in every case, that was the truth. Right. Um, whether or not it's what I needed to hear. But yeah. for these kids, it yes. literally is the yes. end of the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. It's I pretty rad, it. actually. Like, I've been enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. And it also, like... I always dismissed it as just one of those things where I was like, ah, it's behind me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I would, that, no, you I kind of sold like, me on it. You, you liked Akira, I think, right? We, we a lot. saw that a yeah. few years ago, right? It, it, it has some Akira vibes. It looks a bit like Akira. Like, it, it, um, it, even uh, as it goes on, there's even like some story elements that are maybe similar to it and stuff. So, anyway, I think if you liked that, you probably would get into this. And it is like, it is exceptionally well made. Like, it just nice. looks really great. It's have cool. you seen any of Attack on Titan? I have not. I think maybe I saw an episode. Yeah, I've seen like four or five episodes just because my one buddy was real into it. Yeah. And um, it is sort of similar in the idea that like the giants that attack are just fate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no there's no preventing the attacks. Yeah. There's only stopping the attacks. Right, right. And so a lot of drama is mined from the fact that it's like a, a very real thing is that at any moment we might have to get ready. You know, we might have to throw down for battle. And so in a similar way, it is sort of about like, you know, if we are to assign something to God, one of the scary things about God is that so, so should they decide to pull the plug, what are we going to do? You know, right, and yeah, yeah. so and so that thematic sort of gets tied up into that, too. Yeah. I wonder if that's something in more anime that I just don't know because I don't know a lot of anime. Right. Yeah. I'm curious about that, too. There's dude. There's also like really cool sci fi ideas in it, too. Like you they, they start referring to the Magi as the show goes on, which okay. is like. You know, uh, also comes from the Bible. The three Magi uh, yeah, is yeah. also how the three wise men are referred to, right? But so they keep referring to the three Magi, the three Magi, and then eventually you find out that they are supercomputers that govern humanity. That we have we have decided to build artificial intelligence because we couldn't possibly govern ourselves properly. So That's we incredible. build artificial intelligence to do it for us. It's like such a crazy idea. <laughs> That's a crazy idea, but it's one that like we incrementally yes. work towards, and it's not, it's not an awful idea right. to a point. Right. You know, like right. we 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 could probably get a lot more innovation done if we could uh if we could uh, standardize other tasks. Right. But uh, governing us entirely that's terrifying. Yeah, yeah. It's then so, again, it, as of this moment, I'd give it a shot. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know, just anything, please. Literally anything. A solution. Um, but yeah, I, I think you would I nominate cool. this pen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pen is blue. Uh, I really like Evangelion. It's on Netflix, um, and there's like... How, how much of it is there? So it is one season, 26 episodes. Um, but then it gets confusing from there. There's like a bunch of movies that have been made since then. Yeah, yeah, one of them is called The End of Evangelion and supposedly is worth watching, and it's what you should watch when you're done with the series. So that's what we're doing today. It's, it's like the Death the Notes. There's yeah. like so many different Death Note things, yeah. or uh, even a what's it, a Ghost in the Shell? Yes, I watched like the two Ghost in the Shell movies proper, yeah. and then it was a spider web after that that I yes. was like, all right, I'm you know, yeah, yeah, I'm uh. Good. Yeah, so I think there's like a movie that you're meant to watch is meant to sort of be. I think I think if I know, I think I'm right about this. That the idea is, you'll never guess, Dan. In the '90s, there were these fans of this anime, and they liked it a lot. And when it ended, they didn't quite like how it ended, so they hemmed and hawed and complained. And they eventually made a movie called The End of Evangelion to sort of give fans what they wanted out of The End of Evangelion. Mm. But supposedly, that movie is actually pretty good and worth watching, and does feel like a fitting conclusion to the. To the- <laughs> That's. That's like what we were talking about earlier. Yes, what I love the is the cut. idea yeah. of like, I hate the idea that artists bend to the will of the fans. Yeah. But I love when the fans get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh! Yeah. You know? So anyway, like, like I, Sonic's a great example. Yes. Like I hate that they, that they did that. Yes. But also that movie was awesome and it yeah. looked great. And, and I it was don't... probably the right choice as far as probably, like, although, making I think that the movie would have been good otherwise. Yeah. 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 
But it was but probably, I, you're right, the right choice. I think the money-making product it ended up being is because that design, right? Like, yes. Yeah, was that a the doubt. original design and the movie doesn't change at all, you and I still like it. Yep. I don't think parents bring their kids to see it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's true. Yeah, uh, the way that people, and spoiler, the way that people reacted to just seeing the image of Tails yes. Yes. was like, I've, I've never seen anything like that, yeah. ever. It was incredible. There was more joy in that moment than there is in that photograph of the sailor kissing the nurse when World War II ended. <laughs> yeah. People were going fucking bananas. I know. And <laughs> it's like awesome. people 20 years older than us and people 20 years <laughs> younger than us, too. You yeah. know, it was like across the board, people were just, people were throwing their children up in the air in celebration and the kids were also <laughs> excited while they were flying through the air, you know? The, the dude behind us literally said, and I quote, I have never been more excited for a sequel in my life. It's like, really? Okay. I was like, but I'm like, I'm there. I'm totally yeah. gonna go. I know. I'm going. I'm oh, there. that was so fun. <laughs> Everyone was like, oh yes, yeah. yes. It's like, yeah. well, yeah, this is exactly what was definitely gonna yeah. happen at the end of these credits. Yes, this of is course. it. Of course. <laughs> Literally, nothing else would have or could have happened to sequel bait this. It's like we saw that movie with a theater full of Robin Williams' character from Jumanji. Like they, <laughs> yeah. they all had somehow been trapped in a time capsule of some kind and <laughs> didn't know what year they were seeing Sonic the Hedgehog in. The day Tails was introduced, they all got into their blast from the yes. past bomb shelter, yes. and then they left when they heard there was a live action movie, yep. and they they, it blew their minds. No context for the movie market where everything gets an end credit scene. And the end credit scene is always the tease for the next movie. And if there's another famous character that wasn't in the movie you just watched, you can bet your fucking ass they're going to be in that end credit scene. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. That was still one of the most joyous moments of my life. So good. Loved <laughs> that it. Was so much fun. Loved I'm it. glad everyone was happy. Yeah, pretty good. You know, everybody got American pickled and then showed up to that movie yeah. <laughs> and were just fucking. Well, no, they, they fell into a vat of chili that was being prepared <laughs> for chili dogs. Yes. And then emerged just all meaty and ready for tails. That's right. That's right. Um, I think I'm about ready to wrap this thing up. How you feeling, man? I feel pretty good. Um, there was something else I was just going to mention. What else did you quick. watch? What did you watch? I revisited the box. Uh, oh, since dude, I'm on I would this post Southland Tales, I love to revisit that movie, dude. It's good, um, and I think what I like about it is exactly what everyone's problem is with it, and it's a valid problem because it's based on the Richard Matheson story, Button Button. Uh, and in Button, I've never read Button Button. I have seen the Twilight Zone episode. I think that I've seen the Twilight it. Zone episode. Yeah, and the whole idea is it's a quandary of if you press the button on this box, you will receive a hefty sum of money. I think it's a million dollars in the movie, yeah. but. A complete stranger will die. Yep. Up to you. And yep. so I think that, as I understand it, the bulk of the story is just about the emotional heft of making that decision and then the ethical connotations that come with that. Are you doing something wrong? Are you doing something selfish? Or because you need to provide someone, does that mitigate the fact that it's right. a stranger? If it's not a stranger, does that change things? And it like weighs right. all of that. And so the box actually explains what the device of the box is, why it's been employed, and I think very successfully, excuse me, very successfully keeps that thematic richness alive. And it sort of does literally come to a conclusion of just like, it's a morality choice, you know, like, <laughs> that's what we're testing you for, but I think that the methods that they use to, to expound upon it are just... I mean, on brand for a director that I've come to like really, really love, uh, yes. Richard Kelly. But also, I, I just think it's just such fun, cool, weird sci-fi. And I would double down and say it's probably both James Marsden and Cameron Diaz's best dramatic performances. Oh, that's cool. They're great. I, it's beautiful. Like, I like both of those actors, actually, like quite mm -hmm. a bit. I, I, I think they are both like a little bit unfairly, not maligned, but like... Underused all the time. Yeah, and I, I don't think thought of as as um uh, uh frankly good actors. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And I think we they think are of her as there's actors. something about Mary, right? Which yeah. proves she's funny as hell. She's so funny. Um, yeah. But this thing we see her as like the funny babe. Yep. yep. And as it turns out, she's actually an incredible actress. Yeah. And it's demonstrated here as James Marsden. He's a funny hunk. Yep. He's the pathetic bully. Yep. He's the cowboy that gets sidelined in Westworld. <laughs> You know, it, he's just always that guy. And here he's the leading man being faced with these really, really tough choices. And yeah. 
Man, I, I loved it. It's great. And it's scary. It's legit scary. I remember uh, it being fun. Deeply unsettling. I, I just really loved everything about it. And it was one that I went in to be like, okay, well, I'm just going to watch this and you know enjoy it for what it is because I remember yeah. it being whatever. And I gave it a perfect score. It is like so extremely my shit. I remember, I, I would, you got to revisit it. I remember liking it and no one else. You know what I mean? Like I remember yeah, yeah. feeling like the, the odd man out enjoying that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do also distinctly remember one of the elements of the ending being like, oh, sorry, what? What are we doing now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember there was like watching one... it. Yeah, that yeah. disappeared for me. OK, cool. Because yeah. there was I was afraid because I remember being like, there's a point where I had to go. Just go with it. It's weird for weird sake. Right. Yeah. And now it's one of those things where you, like to overthink it is a problem. Like, yeah. uh, what were we watching? Oh, like, like lose. We were lose. watching that. And it was like, if you overthink it, it becomes nonsensical. But if you actually just take it 100 percent at face value, yeah. they're literally just walking you through how that device works. Right. And the box very much has a lot of just straight up explan- explanations of this is what's happening. Yeah. But since we're so conditioned to be like, but what's the reveal? What's the hook? Uh-huh. Uh, it, and it's not there. Yeah. We end up going, oh, that didn't make sense when really it's it's as straightforward as it comes. There's really only one moment of surrealism that I don't quite get where it ties in. But I this time around, it just felt more like this is here to give a sense of otherworldliness to what's going on. Yeah. This is here to let in this moment, I don't want to spoil too much, but this is here to let James Marsden's character know that he's dealing with something beyond the tangible. I wonder and if we're talking about the same thing, actually. The we water columns, be. and yeah, he's got to yep, choose one? Yep, yeah, yep, it's, yeah, it's exactly that. And yeah. so, but at the same time, later it is sort of explained, too, that, like, they're presenting him with three options, and they right. were actually presenting him with no options because he already made the wrong decision. And so <laughs> it's that much more sinister and otherworldly. It, it, man, I, I loved it. You gotta, you gotta revisit the box. Do it's I remember great. that... Frank Langella plays a man with one eye or something like that. Frank Langella plays a man with two eyes, but this part of his face is completely gone. Oh, that's right. And it's just like flesh ripped apart. You can see the tendons. He looks like, uh, what's his name? Two-Face. Not Two-Face, but um, uh, Jonah Hex. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's a really great effect. It's a little bit dated, but I love that you can see his teeth through the side. So as he's talking, and he's a very proper, very polite man. He's quite charming. You can just see his jaw working, (laughs) and it is just disgusting. I love it. (laughs) Yeah, I would love to revisit that. I think you would love it, too. Yeah. We got to hit that in Southland Tales, man. Sure. Because it's just like that dude is tapped into something. And I just yeah. want to know more. All right. I'm into yeah. it. I, I mean, he I mean, he to me, he's like a, he's like a Proyas. I mean, maybe that's yeah. an unfair comparison. I don't know. But I, I, I like the there's an auteurism to those guys, but they're weird auteurs. They're like I think really that's a strange. great comparison. Yeah. Because if you look at something like Southland Tales or Gods of Egypt, it's no wonder that everyone looked at that and was like, what? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but. Yeah. The whole time, you know, folks like you and I are watching it going like, this is a vision someone had and they made it. And I just have to, I have to dance with this vision (laughs) and it's a worthwhile dance if you ask me, but man, oh man. And the box is him doing mainstream shit. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe he, I'm actually have always been surprised that the box is what put him in director jail. Yeah. Because the box, I always thought like, I know that people didn't like it as much as I did, but like. It seemed like such a good conventional, and I don't mean that as an insult, but like a good yeah. conventional, like it was Hollywood sci-fi picture, you know? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I don't know. That that felt like it should have been the thing that actually opened the doors for him to finally make some more movies, you know? I think what it came down to, if I were to guess, would be, you know, on the one hand, Donnie Darko fans go into that and go, this is like too straightforward. Yeah. On the other hand, you know, uh, normal fans go in there and go, this is not a regular thriller. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so then it just becomes like, what is it? And it's none what, of those things. What is the box? So What's in the box? What is the box? Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> oh, I love it. So yeah, the box, and I'll just throw this out there, even though I'm like half under embargo as well, but this goes up Sunday, right? Yeah. That clears me of both the relic embargo, but I won't even say much about it, but next week... The Beach House comes out on Shutter. Very excited to watch that. Avoid the trailer. Yeah. Well, I don't think that'll sink it for you. It's one of those movies that I went in knowing nothing and it was better for it. But who, as someone who hates the beach, it just ooked all of my pooks. It was Love just it. gross, dude. <laughs> I loved it. 
I'll tell you what, actually, I think American Pickle is the first trailer I've watched like since quarantine. So like, I don't even, I yeah, literally know nothing true. about Tenet. I've watched no Tenet trailers. I, I don't want to know about anything it. about Tenet. Yeah. I just want to go in blind. Yep. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I and I've been enjoying that life, actually, that no trailer life where I'm just like, hmm, this movie has pedigree that I enjoy. I will watch it. You know? And we're like, we're in a, we're lucky enough, we're privileged enough to be like in a position where if there's a movie I want to see, I'm going to be able to see I it. Usually and I'm going to be able it. to see it you know, however I want. Yeah. And it's like, so as soon as I hear about something, I know whether I want to see it or not. Heck, I know, I know that even if I don't want to see it, that I'm probably going to end up seeing it. So yeah. it's like, why watch the trailer? But yeah. uh, definitely uh, it'll hit shutter. I believe later <laughs> the week that this episode yeah. drops and highly recommend cool. really great central performance. And also uh, Jake Weber shows up in it. He was the dad in Wendigo, and he was like the smart guy in the Zack Snyder Dawn of the Dead. I like that guy. An actor that I like, but hasn't really found Agreed. a way into anything major. Agreed. And like, I think he he was also one of those ones like, uh, what was that guy's name? Josh Hamilton, where yeah. he was a young hunk, but then like two years later, he was just a middle aged man. Well, and so like, he's not hunky anymore, so they lost their use for him. The Patrick that, Wilson just took it all. I know. The thing that I like about that guy, though, is. I am surprised, and maybe maybe he doesn't want to be utilized this way and has avoided this, but, like, I think he would make a great character actor. Yeah. Like, his performance in... I mean, he's good in Wendigo, but his performance in Dawn of the Dead is really good. It's good. And, and the reason it's so good is because he doesn't actually feel like a leading man. He's in the leading yeah. man role, but... He feels like a weird character. -y, He's an everyman. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I, but he but he makes it in a way that's like compelling. Yeah. Yeah, I I think that that dude would do well to like, you know, get Duncan Jones to cast him in like a a, a yeah. weird role in one of his movies or something. Do you know what I mean? Well, I I, I think you having said that. Yeah. There's a lot that you'll like about what okay, he cool. is tasked with in the beach cool. house. Yeah, it's really a lot of fun. But like, cool. man, I hate the beach. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's cool, man. It cool. just it goes a direction that I was like, I don't like. I thought it was going in one direction, and then it really does not. Cool. And whereas I think that might lead to it feeling incomplete for some people, the bait and switch is like some real good terror filmmaking. I, I cool. it's great, really All great. Right. I'm into it. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited. I think the embargo for both of those is Sunday, so we're good, right? Perfect. Yeah, this goes up good. Sunday, right? It goes yeah. up Sunday. Yeah, we're good. We're cool, good. cool. We're good. So we're good. I don't good. want to lose all my connections. Fine, I'm breaking rules with fine. my excitement. No, no. This will go up Sunday morning. I got we're good. That stuff. Yeah, I honestly have not been watching too much. We've been really busy, and we've been sort of like letting TV be our guide through the last little bit of uh, quarantine. Yeah. Um, Hannibal so. uh, took up. I, I just need a break from it now just to breathe. Yeah. Um, and also just because I wanted to, like, watch some movies, you know, and, like, yeah, I, I, I have all these streaming services, and I'm looking through them, and it's like, oh, now's my opportunity to watch Apocalypse Now, you know, like, right. things like that. Yeah. So I want to get that in. Yeah, that's like, good. Tonight, I think we're, oh, no, not tonight. I think tomorrow we are going to do the Hamilton train now that that's out. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Which I'm excited if, for. I wonder if we'll do that. I know we're going to watch Jaws said... tomorrow. Jaws oh, is right going to be our uh, Fourth of July movie for the us. Best Fourth of July. Movie. We might do the Burning as well because I think that's up on. Oh Shutter yeah, now. that just came up on Shutter, and that is yeah. sort of a summer I don't movie. Know if it's a Fourth of July movie, but it's a summer, summer movie. movie for sure. Yeah. Um, we saw the touring thing of Hamilton, and I went into it just being like, I know this is good, but it's probably not as good as people say. And then it was just better. So yeah, I'm yeah. very excited to watch the original cast, but I'm mostly excited just to watch how one cinematically shoots a stage performance. Because yeah. as I understand it, this was cinematically shot. And when I think of, like, remember the Oscars last year? That was one of the most awfully shot live <laughs> things I've ever seen. It was baffling. Yeah. And uh, so I'm very curious to see how this is done with, like, the best live stage photographers in the biz yeah. creating a cinematic experience. So I'm very excited mostly about that aspect since I already know the story. Yeah, I'm curious. I, I've not actually seen Hamilton at all, so I probably will. I don't know if I'll do it tomorrow, but I'm. I'm yeah, I probably it's will watch it. Man. it. Yeah. It's like a fun, like history podcast, but told through yeah, yeah. performance. You know, it's because yeah, cool. you listen. It's a huge story. We go, oh man, it's like wild. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Uh, yeah, it's wild, man. Yeah. That's really there's no other way to describe it. It's just yeah. wild. It's wild. You go, wow, I just learned so much from a whole bunch <laughs> of people rapping, and like sort of like. Uh, just taking back the idea of, of what the image of a forefather should be, you know, yeah. what America looks like. It's cool. 
I, hopefully you'll take this appropriately. I, for some reason, you just reminded me of Steve. Bru- like if Steve Brule had to describe Hamilton, how that's would I you- never take that appropriately? That's amazing. <laughs> well, because at it. some point you were just like, because you're like, wow. And I was like, yeah. I just imagine Steve Brule being like, it's like, it's like history comes alive in a performance. It's like, wow. It's he's like, this is a bunch of good boys having yeah. rhyme talk for yeah. history yeah. called Krangus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hamiltrang. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it is. Hamiltrang. Yeah. Goodbye, Al- good boy Alexander Hangeltris. You know, <laughs> says says rhyme proms for the history. <laughs> I don't know why, but when you said it's like wow, I was like, yeah, he ruled it. <laughs> man, there's a little brule in all of us. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want to wrap this thing up, man? Let's wrap it up, man. Let's, let's have, do it. Let's, let's uh, always end it, brule. What are you gonna do? Peek over pe- that. Yeah, people should find us on cinema76.com. Uh, and uh, I like to movie movie everywhere is I like to movie Twitter, Facebook. You can email us, I like to movie at gmail.com. And I'm on Twitter and uh, uh, letterboxed at Philadelphia with an F. Yep, all of that, cinema76.com. I'll add findy.com, uh, at Dan Scully on everything else. And uh, yeah, guys, happy birthday, America. Happy 4th of July. Yep, should be. Sign oh, yeah, we off. have a sign off. We do, don't we? we? Do have a sign That's off. how tired I am. I was just like, what do we do? Do we just wave goodbye? <laughs> yeah, we like to movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name is Garrett Smith, and I like to movie movie. My name is Dan Scully, and I like to movie movie. Uh, we all know that you like to movie movie because we, we like to, to movie. movie. Oh, I, th- I was going to make a flame burst, but I guess my lighter's out of. Uh... <laughs> <laughs>